I'm not big for you. Mm -hmm. I'm big for me. Wow, like, um, because I really thought I was on my way. Only you can stop you. Go for it. Hello and welcome to Inspired Living TV. I'm Carrie Murphy and today I am coming to you from the beautiful set of the hit show on the Hallmark Channel, Home and Family. And I am sitting down with an Emmy Award winning journalist, a dedicated dad, a photographer extraordinaire, and a self-proclaimed goofball and perfectionist. Yes, that's right. The one and only Mark Steinis. Oh, well, that was such a lead in. I don't know if I could live up to all of those things. Did I really do a lot of that stuff? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, at least the research says. Well, yes, research wise, just, you know, welcome to our home and our family. Thank you, you very here. much. It is beautiful and it's quite the home inside. It is actually a real home. And rumor has it, mm. you just got picked up for another season. I know. Isn't that fantastic? Ah, that in is. this day and age that we are going, we're picked up for season four. Uh, when we when we started, there were so many other shows that were out there that were trying to do whether it was Jeff Probst's show or Katie mm -hmm. Couric's show, um, you know Ricky Lake. All of that they all came out of the gate at the same time, and we're the little engine that could. We're just building an audience and growing, and that to me it is um, such. Uh, it speaks volumes to the the staff that works here, our producers going out and cultivating fresh the host, material. maybe yeah. You know, maybe. We'll give oh, you a little credit. Christina's a New York Times best, <laughs> you know, author, so I'll give her the credit. But, you know, really, we're two hours a day. Yeah, that's a lot of content. That's a, that's a lot, lot to fill. That's a lot of horse to saddle right, right. there. <laughs> that's right. Wow. But I'm, I'm glad, and, it, and I leave here more inspired, if I may use your Please show. Please do. Yes. More inspired every day to live better. Yeah. Because that's what we teach people to do. I love that. That's yeah. fantastic. So people might not know, Mark, that you actually are from a small town in Iowa yeah. who made it made it pretty big. I mean, I'm sorry about entertainment tonight, <laughs> yeah. you know, all, all that you've done acting and hosting. But is that, I th I, you know what, as much as I'm really proud of that, that story has been told. There's been so many really successful stories in this town with actors. Elijah Wood actually is from Cedar Rapids, yes. which is not as small as my town, which is Dubuque, Iowa. But, you know, to I don't know if it's because not much is handed to us. And You're you know, used to working hard for things? You work hard, you show up before everybody else, you stay later. I know that sound, I'm not making that up. That's right. been in many, many bios before. Uh, not, you know, reinventing the wheel here, but you do that. That's just what I've been taught. You know, my dad worked at John Deere and they were both farmers. Hmm. I worked on the farm as a kid. I knew what it was like, those long days walking corn, which you probably don't know, right. passing <laughs> corn, which is a process. Uh, no. Look yeah. it up, yeah. wiki, it, wiki it, and you'll see. It is a grueling job. So when I come here and they're like, you need to be in hair and makeup at 5 a.m., I'm like, really? Yeah, that's easy. That. Yeah. yeah, I don't need to go out onto the farm. Yeah. Right? So. Well, that's great. But you started behind the camera, not in front of the camera. I did. I did. Mostly but because I was shy. Really? Well, I was, I liked. He was shy. I, he was shy. Well, I see, I see that. <laughs> You know, I, I, yes, I started behind the camera because I have an eye. I have a creative eye. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, my photography, that was my real passion. Oh, and it's so beautiful. And I, beautiful thank work. Thank you. Thank you. I take a, that to me is that um, you, you understand as an artist, you want to put stuff out there, but you don't want to put it too far because you don't yeah. want to judge. Yes. You know, you yes. just want to be oh, like, look yes. at my work, but don't say anything bad about it. Okay. But I started behind the scenes and a, I had a couple of mentors in my life who said, no, 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 no. You, you're on the other side. And I was like, gulp, what? No, no, you need to be on the other side of the camera. Hmm. And they believed in me and they showed so much, I had so much confidence in me that, that I couldn't help but have that in myself. Mm -hmm. And I took that step. We were talking just at lunch. Um, Christina's husband, Tony, who I have so much respect and admiration for, said, you know, in life there's full of black doors. Mm. You look at those doors and you have to see what's on the other side. And just because it's dark and scary doesn't mean you open doors. But most people it. won't enter. No, they won't. Yeah. Because they're fear based. Right. Yeah. Well, I love that you said you had mentors. Yeah. You had people that kind of pushed you to go on the other side. And actually, I teach people how to be on camera. So, you know, what, uh, what, is, what is a tip that you could give someone who's watching you? Because, of course, you're so natural and they look at, you know, all the work that you've done. Yeah. You know, what would you say to someone who is looking at a black door? Yeah. <laughs> saying that I do want to go out there and I want to play bigger and, and be seen and heard. Uh, well, you know, growing up when I grew up there, you didn't have an opportunity to go out and buy your own camera and do this. You, it was very difficult to right. be sort of on camera. So. When I talk to people, I tell them, I, I ask them, I'm like, 
why do you want to be on camera? What does that mean to you? Mm -hmm. Because being on camera, you can go to Best Buy and buy a camera right. and set it up <laughs> at home and be on camera. Yeah. What is it about being on camera that is appealing to you? Because if you just want to be famous or you want people to look at you or you think you're pretty and people tell you you're pretty or handsome, you might as well get out of the business. You, right, that only goes so far. It only goes yeah. so far. You have to be really interested in people mm -hmm. and curious to hear their story and let them tell their story. And the greatest question as a journalist that you can ever ask is why? Yes. Just keep it simple, just go, why? And that is actually one of the points I tell, I tell my entrepreneurs and people that want to build brands online. Mm -hmm. It's like always start with the person that you're serving, mm -hmm. which is what you do every day with your show, I'm sure, is you're thinking, what yeah. does the audience want? Mm -hmm. And how do we serve them? And why exactly. are they showing up? Yeah. yeah. And it takes a little bit. It takes some experience. It takes people around you to help you sometimes find that. We'll sit in a meeting and, and the producer will be pitching this and we'll be like, well, wh why? why are we yeah. talking about bone broth today? What's, right. What is it about <laughs> that? Why are we making that in the kitchen? Uh -huh. Well, it's trending right now. Well, why is it trending? What is it about it? And you just keep digging and pretty soon you'll find the reason that you're, you're telling that story. Right. So you, we were talking about mentors mm -hmm. and I'm such an advocate of mentors and you actually started a mentorship program back in your alma, alma wow, mater. I do research. I do, I know my <laughs> stuff. So why did you decide to do that? Why was that important to you? I went back to my college, the University of Northern Iowa, our Panthers, and I went to the TV division. Now the school is really known for, for creating educators, mm -hmm. but you know, I got my start there and I wanted to go back and give back and I remember speaking to this class and I deliberately left some time at the end to answer questions, and there were no questions. And I thought, hmm. wow, how is it that you're sitting here in a very competitive field you want to get into and broadcast, broadcast media, and a guy who started here who's now in Hollywood hosting and, or the number one entertainment show in the world, and you have not a single question <laughs> for me? So I, I thought, you know, sure, I can write a check, mm -hmm. but it clearly it's not going where it needs to be. Right. So I thought if I can infect mm -hmm. that gene pool with inspiration and give them experience and then pluck them back in or drop them back in, they can perhaps infect the others. Mm -hmm. So I began Love working that. with juniors, uh, not seniors, but juniors, a couple seniors would come. But so I could work with them. They could see, like they would literally drive from the cornfields across Nebraska to here. Uh, out of Iowa and then be at the movie premiere for Breaking Dawn or whatever that they, whatever that, that they, you know, walked into and they're mm -hmm. standing there on the red carpet going, what? Yeah. And I tell them, I'm like, yeah. And I tell them, this is the thing I told them, I go, we may be standing this close to one another, but don't ever confuse the fact that you're this close to the success that you're striving for. Oh, I love that. Because just by proximity doesn't mean you're a success. There's miles away. You must go back and stand in Iowa but you have an experience now, an opportunity to see what it takes, the competitive and the drive that you have to have. And, um, and so that's what you know, I did and it was, you know, worked to a certain point and then when I left and came here, we didn't have the program for me to implement that. Yeah, so Mark, a few years back, you made a mm -hmm. big decision after mm -hmm. 17 years on being on Entertainment right. Tonight, right. which is the show that I grew up watching and I wanted right. to be Mary Hart, so I was like, it's really ah. cool to see you on that. Um, you decided to let go of that and at the same time, you actually made probably a very difficult decision to end a 17 year marriage. Yeah, it was, you know, that was part of the decision. I mean, to behind everything, leaving entertainment tonight was, uh, I knew that I needed to spend more time with my kids. I traveled so much with ET and a lot of it was at a moment's notice. And I missed out on birthdays. I missed out on all important dates, first days of school and things like that because you know, Entertainment Tonight, as wonderful as it is, is extremely demanding when you're in the position I was in. They want you out there up front representing sure. their show. And that show, like anything, more than even my children, is an infant. Every single day it needed to be fed and nourished. And when breaking news happened, or sometimes you would get something and they work out an exclusive at the last minute, you were on a plane to Rome, or you were yeah, on a plane. And it sound, and it, I understand that from the normal person's point of view. It's like, oh my God, you're on a plane and you're traveling the world. Yeah. Travel after 9-11 made a huge shift and it is not fun. It is not something that goes smoothly a good portion of the time. Mm -hmm. um, I knew that I was going to um, make some dramatic changes. Again, the black door, if you will. Yeah. But I was at a position where I needed to walk through that because on the other side of that was where my life was going to begin, where I began to take ownership of my life back and not serving just a TV show and, and feeding the career that I was going to be more of family. And that, that was a choice that wasn't easy to make, but I think there's 
a lot of times you sit and you try to calculate the risk mm -hmm. and you just have to take the risk. Yes. Don't worry about the calculations because you leave that up to somebody else who's a little bit higher pay grade than us right. to determine what lesson it is for you to you know, learn from it. But Mark, that's such a great example because I'm sure there's people watching right now who are maybe in a job or a field where they feel like, gosh, I am at the top of my game yeah. and yet it's not working for me. Yeah. You know, I, I'm sacrificing too much or I'm not connected to spirit or my family is missing out. Yeah. And that was kind of that choice that you had to make. Was that scary for you? You know, it, of course it was scary. I mean, but, but I, I've learned along the process that fear is a great motivator for me. Fear allows me to uh, not be complacent and move from where I currently am to the, through it, you know? They, what they say, when going through hell, don't stop. Yeah, yeah keep going. And <laughs> just keep on going, baby. And you, you do that. I, I also reflected upon something, a man that I only met one time, but a lot of people know John Wooden, or bless his heart. Uh, the great basketball coach at UCLA. When I was a sportscaster at, at KCAL, I was they, it was the first John Wooden Classic, and I um, I interviewed him, and he had just finished speaking to the basketball teams that were competing in the tournament, and I said, "What do you want them to walk away learning? Not about victory or defeat, but what do you want them to know?" And he said that you need two things in life, and being the simpleton that I am, I was like, "Wow." If That's I just it, get just one of them, <laughs> if I get one of them halfway there, uh -huh. so I really was like, I was all ears. And whether I became a receptacle of what his knowledge was, but I just respected him so much in so many ways, he said, the first thing you need is love. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was like, okay, well, we can do that. And he said, you know, that's giving it, and in return you'll get from it. But the second thing is balance. Hmm. And that was the part that, the love part I get, you know, that's the greatest gift of all that sure. you once you find love and you have children you understand that but the balance is a thing that's tough you can look at so some of the most struggle. successful people that we label successful yeah. in our world and you go behind the scenes and their personal life is completely out of balance do we need those people in our society sure because they are um, they break they have breakthroughs for us they lead us down a creative path or tell a story or something but it's sad because sometimes children and relationships and family lie in that way. You are, from what I can tell, an extraordinary dad to your two sons. And there are more and more people, men and women, um, who are, you know, being that single parent and, and mm -hmm. trying to do it all. Yeah. How, how, do, you, how do you balance, Mark? Back to the John Wooden <laughs> thing. You know, I, I am so blessed, first of all, and thank you for the compliment. I am so blessed to have this job because I went from in the one year that I leave entertainment tonight after doing the same thing for 17 years and the single within a 365 day 12 month calendar I ended up going through a divorce becoming a single father I had a cancer scare which people don't oh know gosh. about I had double hernia surgery and my father died that was a, that was from January to September oh. so I still had a lot of processing to do and I still came out of that, and then I all of a sudden was having to deal with just all of the mishmash of a 17-year marriage, of sure. trying to separate property and dealing with all the paperwork because we have a corporation and stuff together. It was just a lot of heady stuff. Um, balancing it was keeping my kids number one. Mm. So ushering them through the transition, making sure that their health and mental health and well-being was always cared for and looked after, and to know that they were loved. And once that was good, that's my rock. And then everything else sort of um, expanded from that. I knew that I had to keep really doing well at this job. And that's why we pick up, get season four pickup. I'm like, right. thank you. Yes. Because that takes care of them. But without them, I really have no strong desire to you know, work. Of course, I want to work. But I mean, they're the reason I get out of bed every day. Mm -hmm. So until, if I remove them from number one, I lose that passion to do all the other stuff. That's sure. important. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's great advice too, is just, you know what, just focus on what's most important and everything yeah. else kind of lines up. I hold them number one and I hold them accountable too. I mean, it just doesn't mean they get a free ride. It's, you know, I'm a fair father, but I'm, I have boundaries for them. And I try desperately not to be their best friend um, because I want to, because I know they went through a difficult time yeah. and I want to know that they can always come and talk to me, but you know, you're going to pick up your room. Right. You're going to, you you're know, you're dad. limited. Yeah. Yes. You're still dad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, on a lighter note, you were featured in that very lovely magazine that features some of the sexiest oh. people alive. <laughs> 
pretty sexy, huh? Uh, it's pretty sexy. No, no. <laughs> But you're also a sports advocate. Like you're someone who really is staying healthy, which we're talking about balance and kids yeah. and work. You know, you keep yourself in really great shape. And please don't tell me I, it's genetics because I see <laughs> we'll bring someone over here and we'll like start glamorizing. I, you know what it is. I, for some reason, and you can actually look this up because this is not a, if you, you know, I looked up when you have those horoscope books. Oh, and yeah. if you look up June 7th, the, the, the month that I, or the day that I was born. So you're a Gemini. I'm a Gemini. I'm a Gemini too. And if you, what's yours? May 30th. Okay, you're right. Yeah, I'm right me. on the, yeah. If you look at it, I'm born the same day as Prince and Tom Jones. Okay. Which will give you a little bit of the other <laughs> Gemini part of me. But one of the things that was listed in there that I found very interesting is that the person born on this day tends to, uh, depending on how much you invest into this, is uh, very sort of body aware and takes care of themselves and health wise. Mm -hmm. So I've always done that. My routine is, and it probably was a, at least in the last two and a half years, I've done this before, but I really focused in the past, is I always feel I adopted a belief and that's something else that is so important is your beliefs and what you believe Absolutely, in yes. is that I need to deposit into me first. And I do that the okay, first wait, wait. thing. Okay, wait, I just want you to say that again. You need to what? Because I the, think there's a lot of people that need to hear uh, this right now. I <laughs> Besides I, people, I, yeah. <laughs> As little <laughs> tours go by. I have to deposit into me first. Mm -hmm. I have to I have to take that saving. So I the, literally I will get up in the morning and I'll have a little coffee or whatever and I'll look at the show while I'm waking up. But then I hit the, I hit, I have a gym in, that I have in my house. It's not a gym. It's just a, it's my garage. But it's a <laughs> workout area yeah. that I can prove it. And I, that's where I put back into me and my physical well-being and that is important to me because the physical side if, if you if you ever hurt and you're you realize how that pain and agony gets into your psyche as well and oh, you're sure. like oh my back or my knee or whatever and then it brings you down if this is working for me it helps it helps into the mental state and then it also helps me approach life in a much more positive manner were you that way before the cancer scare did you yeah, I was. That? Yeah, I was always, always aware of the health and fitness aspect of what I did. I just have been refining it, mm -hmm. and at this point, I honestly look at myself now and say I'm in better shape now than when I played football. Wow. I eat better. It's because of the show. Right. We have you experts guys come. All the time. This is a this is a think tank. <laughs> yes. You know, when you come yeah. in, I mean, I, we were talking about this the other day. I go, okay, so I go through this massive transition, and I leave this massively popular show, and I come to this show on Hallmark, which is just starting up, and it's a very homey feel here, and it's called Home and Family, and okay. I become a single dad. I'm I'm raising my kids, and I'm learning how to cook. I'm learning how to take care of them. How I'm learning how to. For you. It is how a thing. For you. This is like my university. Yeah. For fans. So, um, my boys came on here uh, and did a magic show of all things. You know, on national television. They're 11 and 13. I would have soiled myself at that age <laughs> on national television. And they are here, and I'm so oh, proud of them. And Mark, to wonderful. see the yeah. To, so I, I I see the show as such a gift. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's it's not by chance that I'm here doing this. This is this is meant to be. Every I, I my belief. When you talk about beliefs, my belief is that everything is intended, Absolutely, just as way um, it is supposed it's supposed to be, and that includes the heartache. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Every challenge brings us to something greater, and you had to go through that black door, and yeah. say you know goodbye to something mm -hmm. that ego wise would have said, "What in the world yeah. are you doing? Are you crazy?" And yeah. here you are. Yeah. You know, with a job that really fuels your soul, fuels your family, yeah, and seems like a pretty great place to be. It is. I'm. Go I don't know if I'm going home. I'm gonna stay here. You're gonna stay here. I'm There's a really here. like nice little bedroom. I'm like, good. I could take. I a know, nap. right? <laughs> the, <laughs> this I is a, a lot of people don't know. It's a real house. Yeah. So that's you know the flowers over there. Those aren't real, but you can look at those later. Oh, they're, but they're lovely. you know we are on a lot. Yes. And at some point, those are real. <laughs> I'm real. You are. Yeah. I'm yes. Real. Yeah. Okay. So before we wrap up, Mark, mm -hmm. thank you so much for sharing you know, your great wisdom with us. And you know, what does inspired living mean to you? Um, inspired living to me means I look at myself as a truth seeker, mm -hmm. and truth evades us every single day, and it eludes us us personally. If you know what your truth is, and sometimes you have to sit and really look for it because it's going to want to hide from you because yeah. it takes courage to find truth. It to does. me, that's what. To me, that's what being inspired is. It's like, aha, that's how I really feel about her, or that's how I really feel about this situation. I don't like that about myself. But if you know the truth, then you can begin to work on fixing things that aren't maybe the way you want them in your life. Does that work? It works. It's good. good. So if good. people want to find out more about 
home and family mm -hmm. and how to watch this fantastic show. How do they do that? Well, you can watch us every single day Hallmark Channel at uh, 10 o'clock, uh, 10 to 12, and then there's a rerun. And I hear they maybe even add in the third hour of us or wow. a third <laughs> airing of it. So it could be six hours a day of me. Don't get sick of me, please. <laughs> right, yes. Turn it off after a Stay while. Healthy. Yeah, don't watch yes. it all that. You'll get sick of us. Uh, you can go to our website, which is hallmarkchannel.com forward slash home and family TV. Um, and we'll have you know, the links. We'll have the yeah, links you so, can, all so the people links and can stuff. connect. By the way, our website is phenomenal because we take a lot of the stuff. If you miss the show, you can go play back how they made the brisket or how Mark made that DIY project. Yeah, I need to become a host on a show like this because I might be able to start cooking <laughs> yeah. and yeah, nah. the DIY stuff. Well, thank you again. You're and thank you for watching this Inspired Living interview. If you want more inspiration, and come on, I know that you do, right? Mm -hmm. Just head over to inspiredliving.com. TV and make sure to comment. Did Mark say something? Did the black door hit a nerve? <laughs> Are you seeking your truth? If so, please post a comment because I'm going to be sharing them with Mark and we're going to be talking about it and we want to be able to comment and Love support you in any way that we can. So as always, thank you so much and remember to keep dreaming it, living it, and being it. Until next time.